All right, I got something to show you before we talk about the R34. I <laughs> currently getting a Kiesel Custom Shop guitar made, but I bought one. I bought one of these in the meantime to tie myself over. <laughs> So obviously about an R34, and I want to let you guys know before we get started, I uh, we're bringing back the legalize the R34 T-shirt in celebration that I finally found one. I've been looking for one for a few years, and we initially like brought this shirt onto our five free supply because we couldn't find one and it wasn't legal. Uh, but this one is going to be a white design because we got a, I got a white R34, and uh, yeah, so they're live on five three now. You could buy those to enter into the giveaway as well. So let's uh, I'll put my guitar up and start talking about the car. By the way, by the time this video goes out, this car should be running. I should have my intercooler, but you can win this R32 and 3,000 bucks cash. Just go to the links in the description. You can go to Power JDM or Five Free Supply, but uh, all the info is for you in the description. Let's get going. I'm genuinely excited to make this video for you guys because I have been looking for years for an R34. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, I would. Again, that link is in the description as well. Um, I do a lot of question and answer stuff. You just watch my story and look at my posts anyways. But I have a bunch of questions that I'm gonna answer from you guys. If you're wondering what the process is like for importing an R34, like you're curious about it, you're wanting to do it yourself, or you just don't know, you know, is it federally legal, is it illegal, whatever it is, and also what my plans are, whatever, like process of buying one, how you import it, I'm gonna talk about all of that in this video. So if you want that sort of information, don't get caught skipping around because I'm gonna answer a lot of questions. To get going, yes, I won at auction an R34. We'll say up front, I did not buy a GTR and I'll explain why here in a second. I guess I'll go ahead and rewind and start talking about um, the process, right? I've been looking to buy an R34 seriously for uh, about about six months now, maybe a little bit more. I also, if you guys don't remember, years ago I tried buying an R34 and it was just so sketchy at that point in time because I've actually had friends who have had cars impounded and crushed that have been imports that they registered as like a 240SX or an earlier model Skyline that it was illegal, federally illegal. It is a very real thing and a lot of people think that it's like a myth it's not. I've seen it happen and it's definitely very sketchy. So to answer your first question, yes, R34s are currently illegal to import and they will be until 2023. A 1998 model is 2023. 1999 model is 2024. That's just how the cookie crumbles. I'm not going to talk about all the Motor X cars. I know there's cars here that and you guys can look that up. If you guys want to risk that, that's all on you. But you can pay big fines or you can go to prison. So I'm not trying to do that. I don't really think they're going to throw you in prison. But you could be the first one to find out. So <laughs> I'm not going to. I've been on a mission to uh, invest into an R34. Cars, for me, have always been a hobby. I have loved cars since I was a little kid. I've talked about that plenty over the last videos, some of the last videos that I've made, actually. From building them in video games, just playing video games, watching Fast and Furious, all that kind of stuff. I love cars. Like, it's just in my blood. It's, it's, I have always just loved them. But as I have grown and as my business has grown, I have also learned to use cars as an investment tool. I love seeing what the market is like and then investing at the right times. And so right now, R34s are uh, definitely skyrocketing in price. Just like everything else, actually, the past like two years specifically, Every JDM car has just skyrocketed just because the desire for them, Econ 101, supply and demand. Supply is getting very low and the demand is getting higher and higher every day. I'm gonna send you guys some pictures along with uh, sharing my experience. So I have uh, imported with RB Motoring, or I've done all this with RB Motoring. That's who uh, imported this car actually, the R33 that's right behind me. It's also who imported this car, R32, right behind me as well. <laughs> I've been like kind of on his butt like six months and uh, let me tell you what dude it's been really hard to find an r34 for one to actually win an r34 and two to like to find one that doesn't suck these japanese people love to sell these people over here like rusty crap buckets like they want to get that stuff out of the country it's hard to find the good stuff there's a couple cars that i found it got really serious about two months ago whenever i almost won two of them at the same time this i'm actually like 
I almost bought two at the same time. One of them was like super riced out, which made it really unique and funny. And I would have loved to have made a uh, purchase of like buying the world's most riced out R34. It had like monster stickers everywhere. It was really ugly. I hope I still have some pictures of it. And then another one was kind of clean, but on the inspection sheet, it said rust. And like, that's never, ever good. I think it was like a two out of five. And the monster one was like one out of five. You really don't ever want to import anything that's like under three, but you always like to shoot for like four. You really never find a five. So I've been looking for Skyline GTTs, R34 GTTs. You guys don't know, the GTT is the rear wheel drive RB25 Neo variant of the Skyline. So it's a single turbo RB25, that's rear wheel drive. For the GTR is an RB26, it's all wheel drive and it's wider fenders and stuff like that. I'll get to what my plans are and like why I'm buying that here a little bit later. So I found these two cars and uh, I almost, for, for both of them combined, I told my importer, Trevor, I was like, I wanna bid, I'll bid 25,000 for both of them. The monster one, the riced out one, actually was a, a 25 GT, which was a, it's an NA, not a good car, but I think it was converted to turbo because the, the, the reserve on that one was like 15,000. So glad I didn't bid that high, because I would've been pissed if I bought that car for 15,000 bucks. And then the uh, the one that was next to it, it was actually pretty clean, but it was modified and it had some rust, and uh, I bid like 17, I think, for that. I think the reserve was at 20. That, I'm, I'm glad I didn't get those. I was a little upset, because we, every single day, checked the market, and uh, they would either get snatched up, bought in person for people that are actually at the markets, or they just wouldn't show up. Like, people just don't sell nice R34s. I think a couple weeks ago, I don't remember, it was like March, it was like the very beginning of March, uh, Trevor found one that was like really nice. It was uh, on, it was like almost perfect condition on the spec sheet, which is really rare to find. And uh, it was white. I love white R34s. I like blue as well. Uh, I'm actually not a fan of the Midnight Purple 3. Too many colors going on. I like the blue and I like the white. And so mint condition white one came on the market. I was like, okay, fine. I'm also, I was to the point where I was like, I'm not going to see a perfect condition R34 again. So Trevor like bid 30,000 on it and <laughs> like see what happens. Uh, it had no reserve, I don't think. I don't think it had a reserve, maybe it did. So anyways, I was like, dude, outbid anybody. The auction started at 12, over there in Japan right now, you can buy them for pretty cheap still, and that's why I was kind of getting to the point of like, this is why I'm trying to invest, because two years from now, it's not gonna be the same. These cars are gonna be four, five, 10 times the price, even GTTs, not even GTRs. So starting at 12, he was like, dude, it's gonna go high. I was like, screw it, I don't care. I want this car, it's beautiful, it's perfect condition, it's mint condition. So I wake up the next morning, did long story short, I want it. <laughs> All you guys are gonna know, wanna know how much I paid for it. I usually don't like telling you guys how much I pay for stuff because like, I don't want you guys, like if I ever want to turn around and sell it, you know, people are gonna be like, but you only paid blah, 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 blah. I paid, I won this car for $19,000. <laughs> Like similar ones in the States are selling for like 60,000. Kind of like this car, actually, I don't know if I should tell you how much I spent for that car. I don't know if I'm ever gonna tell you guys how much I bought that car for. That's, a, that's that was too low. <laughs> anyway, so I bought this car for 19K. I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you and talk to you about it. So I'm gonna walk through, I'm just gonna look at the car with you because I, I love, I, I, every day I'm just looking at this car. I'm like, this is mine. So this is a picture of the car at the, at the, at the yard. So this car is officially at the importer yard in Japan. Here it is, it's got the RB25 Neo. You can see a little bit of surface rust. That is totally normal. You honestly can't find cars in Japan without a little bit of surface rust. I mean, have you seen Japan on the map? It's literally surrounded by salt. It's just, it is mint freaking condition. Bone stock. That's the car enthusiast dream, dude. An, un, an untouched platform. The one caveat is it is an auto, but it's easy. I'll just swap over, I'll just swap over a manual. I'd, That'll take me a day, which I'll get to my build plans here in a second as well. But I want to show you the car. Everything is just so nice on it. So we'll get to the outside. Uh, the front end on the GTTs is similar to the GTR, except for one, it's not as wide. And, uh, and two, it doesn't have like the good lip on it. The hood is different, the headlights. If it's anything like the R33s and 32s, the headlights are a little bit different or they're different placements. So uh, what I want to do to this while I'm showing you guys is uh, I'm going to do a Z-Tune kit just like Randy from Eliminate did to his R34. I think it's the cleanest kit ever. Also Dustin Williams, his R his GTR has a Z-Tune kit on it and uh, it's incredible. The front rear fenders and then the front bumper, rear bumper, all that kind of stuff, it's like, it's perfect. I'm going to make this car incredibly clean and we're gonna do a good job. Just like on this R33, how we did a molded kit to make it, you know, a little hippier. The only problem with the body is it has this little spot on it that allegedly is not rust, it's just like a body repair. It looks like somebody actually took a welder, filled a hole or something. But uh, if you look at it, dude, it is mint. Look at the freaking, look at this car. Now we're gonna go to the booty. Ah! Ah! It's so good. The 
eye-catching point of this car is the taillights, is the butt of this car. So nice. There you go, that is it. It is white and um, yeah, so now I'm gonna answer some questions. So um, you guys have a lot of questions. For one, I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask why I didn't buy it buy a GTR. Two, is it legal? What am I doing for storing it? So I'm gonna give you guys all the juicy details of that now. Um, because it actually is pretty interesting. Like this is a pretty high profile, that's a pretty, it's a pretty big deal how, how they do this over there. It's really cool actually. For one, why did I not buy a GTR? So in America, I don't know if you guys have seen the prices of GTRs in America. Even illegal ones, like federally illegal GTRs are currently selling for anywhere from 150 to 200 plus thousand dollars. You find a Motor X car that's here legally, they're 300 plus uh, for a nurse spec or something like that, spec V. So they're, they're really expensive cars. And for me, like, even in Japan right now, they have, they're like a hundred thousand dollars. And you have to pay, you don't finance this kind of stuff. This is cash. You have to pay cash, you, don't, you can't finance. It's not like you can call a bank and say, hey, loan me some money for this car that's 15 billion miles away. Uh, that's also not even legal here. So no matter how much money I ever make, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to justify spending that much money, even though like the investment on that's really dicey because that's a huge initial investment in like what's the percentage you're gonna get back versus how much you're spending. Another thing is like this car will have to sit in a warehouse for two years. It's a 24 hour surveillance warehouse. Like there's guards there, there's cameras and it's safe, but you also have uh, the risk of natural disasters happening. And you've spent $100,000 and, and that crap burns down, like a, the warehouse burns down, or you have something like happen at Ebisu, like an earthquake, like you're out $100,000, brother. <laughs> that sucks, like there's a, there's a centipede. What's the one with a bunch of legs? It's like on the floor right now. It's really cute looking. All right, anyways, that's honestly why. I, I just can't justify spending that much for a stinky Japanese car at the end of the day. The GTTs are still cool. It's a single turbo. It's rear wheel drive, which honestly I prefer. The GTTs, especially with like GTR conversion parts on, they're going for insane money. It's, 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 an, it's a crazy market. This for me, like this is my first baby's college fund. <laughs> I have IRAs, Roth IRAs. I got an investment fund, all that kind of stuff. But cars like, I've made so much money on uh, uh, my the appreciating values of the cars that I bought. So like, it's, a, it's a smart thing to do. I like to look at the market and I like to evaluate like where's it gonna be, uh, try and get ahead of the game. Even though I, being ahead of the R34 game probably would have been like two, three years ago, but like, just it's just risky. I don't see the value in spending that much money. If I'm gonna spend 150K on a car, I'm gonna buy a Lamborghini or something, like something that's actually like, worth the money. I'm just gonna be honest, dude. So um, I'm, before I jump too far ahead, I am gonna answer some of you guys' questions. See, this is what happens when you don't watch the, wa watch the Instagram, bro. So how much did you pay for it and is it legal in the States? So you guys know how much I paid for it. And no, it is not yet legal in the States. What are the steps to buy one at auction and import one? So really you just have to find an importer like Trevor and uh, you have to tell him what you want. So he has a site called JDM Buyer. He also has RB Motoring. You have to find people like Trevor because Trevor's not sketchy. There's a lot of importers that suck and then import some really crappy vehicles and it will absolutely screw you over. Trevor won't do that. He reads the build sheets or he gets them translated and the inspection sheets and uh, he won't import something that's a rust bucket unless you verbally like say, oh, I don't care, like, I want it. It's, it's hard actually, but if you find the right person that has the right connections over there, then it, it works smoothly. The official import date is 2023. So it will sit over there in storage um, and I guess some more details on that. I'm paying $150 a month for that car to sit in a very protected uh, climate control unit for two years, that's 20, that's 24 hours surveillance. Aren't they still illegal to own? Um, it's dicey. Um, technically federal, on a federal level, yes. Doesn't matter what state you live in either, in the state level, they're not legal too. There's obviously loopholes, uh, but the loopholes you find are sketch. What's the plans for the build and what's the goals for the car? I honestly just wanna keep it as simple as possible. Um, R34s are incredible as they sit. Z-Tune is probably the most desirable kit you can do to it. I don't care if you guys have seen it done a bunch or if you, like, it's just the best looking kit you can put on the car. So I'm gonna get a Z-Tune kit. The nice thing is they still make the Z-Tunes because R34s are fairly new. And also Nissan still makes genuine R34 parts from Nissan. Very cool, you can buy stuff brand new OE. We have other questions like R34s aren't legal till 2023. Was there a rule change, special case? No, I'm just, I'm just a good boy and I'm doing it the right way, <laughs> the legal way. What do you think really made the value of R34 skyrocket? Econ 101, guys, like supply and demand. For one, R34s are rare. Now you from Australia, nobody's asking you. I know you've seen them your whole life. There's a lot of countries that did not get the R34. The same goes for 32s and 33s, but the 34 is like the end of the lineage and it was the widely known as the best looking. It mostly comes down to rarity and it also comes down to these bozos paying ridiculous <laughs> amounts of money for uh, old stinky 
Yankee cars. Uh, us crazy people over here that have been playing video games, Need for Speed, and watched, watched Fast and Furious our whole lives, like that car has become sort of an icon. It's more of just something like, hey, we haven't had this. You don't understand, there's so many people that were born in the mid, early 90s or late 80s or even early 2000s or whatever that have grown up looking at this car and having not been able to attain it. And now all these people have money and they wanna spend it on the one thing that they have been focusing on. So like that's really what's driven up the price. But also they are nice and like they, I mean, they're, they're good cars, whatever. Like they look cool, they're sick, and there's just a huge demand for them. Same reason why FDR X7s have gone up in price, same reason why Super, it's the same reason why every single car you see behind me has tripled in value since I've bought it because like, it's a crazy market and there's a huge demand and people are drifting them and you know, <laughs> making, making my clean cars go up in value. Why didn't you look for one earlier? I did, but uh, again, federally illegal. We ran into the, like the major issues. Like I, I really was sketched out once I find that, once I found out like what could happen. Um, basically like, if you guys are curious, you could try, you could gamble. Two things can happen. If you buy an R34, just ship it over here and say, screw it. Uh, you can get lucky and, or the, or the people at the port can turn a blind eye and not give a damn. Or the guy at the port really loves his job and says, hmm, I know that that car's not legal here. Let me go read the VIN and boom, you now have a huge fine to pay or you're gonna go to federal prison or maybe the dude's just gonna be like, hey, pay me off, baby. <laughs> I don't know. They are very strict about that sort of thing. Like they do not mess around. But you know, sometimes how we were gonna do it was buy the 34, load the trailer with tires and cover it with tires so that you couldn't see the R34 and hope they didn't check it. But like, we didn't do that. Don't ever do that. Tell, I'm not encouraging you to do that, but that's how we were thinking about doing it. We said, screw it, that is too sketchy. We're just gonna wait. Is it as fun to drive as people have said they are? The great thing about cars is one person can value driving one type of car way more than this person will. So it honestly, like I'm never gonna say yes or no because it's all up to your, like, your experience. I, I can drive a stock Evo 3 around all day long, whereas some dudes just wanna drive their twin turbo five Mustang around and like that's boring for them. I could do that all day long. I could also drive a twin turbo Mustang. Oh, girl. <laughs> Is it boosted? It's boosted, bro. R34 Supra? I'm always gonna say Supra, boys. Supra is the king. I had uh, I had so many questions, like I think I had 4,000 responses to that, at least, at least maybe more. So um, if you had a question there, like I probably saw it. There's a lot of repetitive ones. I screenshot the ones that I knew would need to get answered. So if you still have questions, so feel free to, to you know, drop, drop something in the comment section. But I feel like I answered every question you might have for buying an R34, or if you're curious, and this applies to any other Import. There is a 25 year rule where it is it is a federal crime to import something that is not 25 years old yet. And that depends on your state. I think California is like 30 or 35. It's crazy. So on a state level, everything's 25 except for a couple states. And then California, you just can't do anything fun anyways. But all the cars you see behind me are legally imported from the 25 year rule. I'm not shaming anybody that had like, I, that's totally cool. Like you're way more badass than me if you have imported a car before 25 years. Respect, bro. I'm just not gonna do that. <laughs> I don't really care that much, and obviously, if you look behind me, I have too much going on anyway, so. I hope that was helpful for you guys. But yes, unfortunately, it won't be, it'll be two years until you guys see that car. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and just, in the video, I have daily advice for you guys. If you guys don't know, I end every video with daily advice. Today, I want to uh, just encourage you guys to be good with your money and be forward thinking. My daily advice is to be forward thinking. I know it's fun to go to the bar, and right now you really can't, but like I know it's fun to go hang out with the boys, and I know it's cool to try and flex the latest and greatest of stuff, but I'm here to tell you right now, people on Instagram don't give a damn. They might double click your photo, they might see what you have, and be like, damn, that's cool, I wish I had that, and then they're just gonna keep scrolling. It's so important to be forward thinking about your future, uh, your, you know, your kids. You, you don't have kids yet, you probably will. Your savings accounts, like it's, it's important to be wise with with your money. Now I'm not saying like don't spend any money. Like you feel free to have your own habits. I'm not going to judge you for it. But um, a big reason why I have been able to accomplish. I mean, thankfully, like God is good. I I'm not going to take credit here, but like, I've always been very forward thinking with my money. Everything I spend money on, I look for ways to get a return on it. Every single thing that I buy, in fact. For stuff like this, like yeah, R34s are sick, but really like, I'm thinking of the future, and I'm also wanting to buy one for cheaper now than it, you know, I could be irresponsible and blow 40, 50 on a GTT two or three years from now, or who knows how expensive they'll be. But that's my advice for you guys. So, yeah, I don't know, stay inside, this this weekend, um, chill. Maybe don't 
buy the new thing that you were wanting or maybe don't blow a hundred dollars on Fortnite. you know what i mean like save where you can pinch where you can but you know i'm not gonna tell you not to have a fun life do what you want to do it's your life i love you guys and i will catch you guys later make sure you guys subscribe and have those notifications on and because uh, that helps me out a ton also just have a good day because that helps peace hey i got two videos for you guys to watch that helps me out a ton actually if you continue watching my content so please do that also make sure you subscribe hit the notification button, and have a good day.